Let's take a look at interviews from an employment law perspective. Interviews are an almost universal aspect of hiring and promotion processes where the degree of subjectivity involved in assessing candidates tends to be high. Contrary to the urging of staffing experts, many employers persist in conducting unstructured interviews in which the questions asked and even more so the criteria used to assess interview performance are left to the interviewer whim. A systematic, structured interview process has both legal and practical benefits for employers. The ability to cite grounds for judgments about interview performance is critical. A candidate turned down for promotion to a management position partly on the basis of his poor interview that demonstrated a lack of aggressiveness did not prevail in his age discrimination suit. The court noted the importance of subjective assessments in selecting managers and professionals. It held that a subjective reason is a legally sufficient, legitimate, non-discriminatory reason if the de defendant articulates a clear and reasonably specific factual basis upon which it based its subjective opinion. In one sex discrimination case, a court pointed to a mixed sex composition of an interview panel, the fact that all candidates were asked the same questions, and the scoring of the applicant's responses as relevant factors in ruling for the employer. However, the scoring of interviews does not, by itself, render them objective and non-discriminatory. The question is how the numbers were assigned. The ease in which bias can taint the interview process makes it advisable for employers to use multiple interviewers, preferably differing in race and sex. Employers should give substantial weight to impressions drawn from interviews only if they're specific and clearly grounded in statements or actions of job candidates. Interviews should be made as standard as possible by using structured interviews and scoring them according to a pre-established criteria. If impressions will be formed in this manner, then everyone should be at least given the same test. Interviewers should refrain from questions or comments pertaining to protected class characteristics. Verbatim written notes from interviews are not required, but the absence of any documentation produced at the time of interview makes it exceedingly difficult to provide specifics in a deposition a year or two later. Maintain written documentation of interviews, particularly observations relied on in making decisions about candidates. 